Hello, hi, I'm Keris from Rainy Day Mum and welcome to Learning with Nature um, as part of Spring Into Education. I'm joined today by three fabulous bloggers. We've got Adrian, Maggie and Tricia who will introduce themselves later and we'll, I'm going to start off with some hands-on fun with tadpoles. Spring is the perfect time for kids to get hands-on and explore the pond. Around end of March and April time in the UK, the ponds are full of frogs and then frog spawn. It's really easy to keep these tiny little animals at home. If you go to a pond, collect some water and some frog spawn. It has to be the water from the pond because tadpoles are affected by the chlorine and fluorine that are in our tap water. So you really do need to collect the water from the pond that they are from and I can't stress how important that is. You then need to keep them in the shade, but also in an area that's protected. So if you do have any late frosts, they're not going to get damaged by the frost. Once they start to hatch, tadpoles love lettuce. And the perfect way to serve them lettuce is if you boil some lettuce for 10 to 15 minutes, or even two minutes, or a minute, depending on your microwave settings, just so that the cells start to break down. Then put it into an ice cube tray with a few bits of lettuce in it and freeze it with some water from the pond. When you go to feed them, take out one of the small ice cubes and put it into the water. The water temperature will decrease slightly but the tadpoles will love the mushed up lettuce that it's fed. Once the tadpoles start to get back legs, you can then just explain to your children what's happening and how the tadpoles are changing into frog legs. But remember that before they get the front legs and the tail is shortened, you really need to take them back to the pond. Or at that point, if you've built yourself a pond and you want to get frogs into it, you could then populate your own pond with those tiny little froglets. And then the following years, they will return to the pond and produce their own frog spawn. And you can repeat the process year after year. It's a fabulous activity for kids to do in um, early to mid spring and they're going to really enjoy watching the tadpoles develop from frog spawn to frogs over around 6 to 12 weeks depending on the temperature where you live. Okay I'm going to pass over to Adrienne next and here she is. Hello I'm Adrienne and I'm going to talk about bugs. Uh, bugs were something that were very difficult for me when I when I first had my daughter and when she was only Oh gosh, eight weeks old, I met a, a girl who, or I should say a girl, a woman who had a two and a half year old who loved bugs. And I said, oh, how do you do that? Because I am not a bug lover. How do you do that? And she said, you know, I really just told myself that I'm never going to flinch and I'm never going to say ooh or ooh in front of her because I want her to have this love for bugs. So I set that as my, my goal. And even though I don't love when my daughter hands me a worm, which you know, or any type of creepy crawler, I, you know, I always can smile and say thank you and then, you know, dispose of it as, as quickly as possible, but encouraging that, that love for her because there are so many great things outside and just finding ways uh, for her to explore those bugs has kind of been one of the things that my husband and I both try to do. So we do bug hunts from time to time. Last year we did with the virtual book club, The Very Quiet Cricket, and our activity was that we waited until it was dark until there were crickets out and we got a flashlight my daughter found a flashlight and we went out and tried to find that cricket we never did find it but it was it was just a fun activity as with our family and just a chance for her to hear different noises at night that we don't usually hear during the day and to identify those noises and so then later when we go outside to say oh i hear a cricket and then in iowa we also have fireflies in the in the summertime so she got to see those as well. And then one of our favorite things to do, something that you can do if you have big rocks or bricks or any type of stone laid in your garden or even at a, a park or a, a play ground, any type of place, even if there, it may be at the pond and there's water nearby, my daughter loves to pick up stones and see what's underneath them. That is, that's not my favorite activity, but she loves to, to pick up the bricks and, and see the different things that are on there. And there's millipedes and and we call them roly polies and uh, or pill bugs I guess and all different kinds of spiders and just the different types of bugs that you may not be able to see on the surface of the garden that are just 
underneath the rock. So, you know, lifting up those rocks and exploring what's under there. And then the last thing that we try to do is we try to plant different types of flowers and plants that we know will attract butterflies or caterpillars or other types of bugs so that our children can see them. So, you know, different types of flowers are more geared to attract butterflies so that our kids can see the different bugs. And then we at our farm have multiple plants and you don't really have to worry about what to plant because caterpillars are going to come and eat tomatoes and, and whatnot. And my husband will bring home the giant tomatoes after they or caterpillars after they've gorged themselves on tomatoes for, for my kids to look at. So, you know, really just trying to foster your garden for that. And if you don't have a garden uh, or a backyard to do that in, finding an, an indoor plant that you can also attract different kinds of bugs to. So that's what we do for our love of bugs outside. Even though I don't love bugs, uh, I do hope to instill that in my children by not shying away from a bug or, or saying, ew, yuck, or smash that quick when they do bring one or we see one. So I'm going to pass it to Maggie, who I believe has a couple of crafts for us. Hi, yeah. Uh, I'm Maggie from Red Ted Art, where I like to get crafty, as some of you might know. Um, we love crafting with nature. So, you know, we have things like pine cones, we things like sticks, we have things like acorns and lots of stones. And the reason I love crafting with nature, I mean, it's, there's lots of reasons. Firstly is you're out in the fresh air, having a look around, exploring your environment, and you're looking around, you're spotting things on the ground. Um, Obviously, some kids don't need encouragement. I mean, we have tons of sticks, but you know, looking for pine cones takes a little bit more effort. So it's kind of a, a nice activity whilst you're out and about, and gives you a little bit of a focus. So we love that part of it—the the looking for things—and we have a little nature bag that the t kids take, and all their nature things go in it. And when we forget it, they're like, "Oh no, mom, I forgot the nature bag." You know, so it's a really big thing. They love that. And then the other reason why I love crafting with nature is um, it's really tactile. I mean, look at a pine cone. It's got all sorts of textures. Um, look at the smooth part of the acorn and the, the rough bit of, of what we call it's a little hat. Um, you know, feel bark. You know, it's all different. Leaves, everything. So it's, it's, it's you know, you've got the veins and the leaf. So it's, it's all about tactile and exploring and feeling. And then, um, obviously, it's, it's free. So it's really good craft material. Kids love crafting. They can go through so much stuff. It's a really nice way to kind of make stuff with them and things that they collect anyway. Even if you encourage, don't encourage it, they probably will try and collect it anyway. And then, and then making into things. So you kind of go, well, what do I make? So a pine cone can become a fairy. Or um, a stick, really simple craft, becomes a stick man. Or another stick. I love this one. You know, look for a really big stick and look what happens, it becomes a stick horse. So, you know, you kind of just look at what you've got, see what you can make. Um, we've got sort of like some sort of other things, sort of a, a, a horse chestnut in the middle, sticks coming out. And, you know, if you, if you don't have any, if you, if you can't think of any ideas of what to make, there's two ways I approach it. Either I say, you know, what does this remind me of? Or look at this one. What does this shape remind me of? This is a gum nut, which you find in Australia. And one day I was looking at it and I went, you know what, it's, it's an octopus. It's, yes, all I need to do is add some legs. So look at your shape. Does it remind you of anything? Look at this. This is a head with a hat. So how do I attach it to something else? So that's one approach. What does it remind me of? And the other approach is to say, okay, I've got pine cone. I'm going to challenge myself to make a car out of this. And you go, right, okay, so if this is going to be a car, and then it sort of kind of becomes a problem-solving exercise. So, um, you know, challenge yourself, ask your kids what can you see, and, and, and go from there. And, and I think crafting with nature is really rewarding and really fun. And, you know, all our blogs um, will have lots of crafts on there for you to, to explore. But that, that, that was me from Red Ted Art, and I'll pass over to Trish now. Hi, I'm Trisha from Inspiration Laboratories, where it's all about encouraging learning through creativity and play. Love to share science ideas at Inspiration Laboratories. I'm a former science teacher, so really, how could I not? Um, I'm going to talk about how to, um, on your nature walks, how you can um, take advantage of learning opportunities. And I've got some pictures that I want to share of some of our nature walks that we can to show you some pictures here. The first thing that I think of when on a nature walk, you could be out in your backyard, you could be out at the park, you could be in your neighborhood, you could be at um, on a trail, or here we're out in the middle of the woods, we're at a creek, and we are just making observations of what we see at the creek. My son is pointing to something that he sees, maybe a fish, 
floating around or whatever. The biggest thing when you're on a nature walk, point out things that you see. Point out whatever things that you know. Give them names. Give them labels. Work That helps work on language development and making observations as well as building vocabulary. Here's another observation that he made. We're um, on the side of a trail here. Lots of flowers. My son, he's three. He was looking at some bugs or insects. He was looking at all kinds of different. We found lady beetles and cucumber beetles and soldier beetles and bees. So he's just looking at each of the different flowers looking to see what insects he can find. This time he's on just, this is in our neighborhood and just a little patch of trees and he is collecting whatever he can find. Seeds, pine cones, leaves, all kinds of different things. Later on we took it back to our house and we actually sorted the collection into different, uh, we were comparing seeds and leaves in this time so you can work on sorting skills and things there. Same little location. Here he's looking at the pine needles and he's feeling the texture of them. So the live pine needles and you can talk about that they're green, they're living, what do they feel like? And here he has the dry ones. And so how, how do they compare to the live ones? They're crispy, they're brown. Here we're on a trail and it's um, trails muddy so my husband is pointing out tracks in the mud and then my son notices another track, a deer print later on. So he is becoming observant and noticing things that we are pointing out to him. One of the activities that we've done in making letters in nature, you take different sticks, leaves, moss, whatever you can find, and make letters out of it, make a little learning activity. This was just at the park, an impromptu letter making thing that we did. And there's some more of our letters. And then this is just one of my favorite little shots that I took playing with the settings on my camera. Just shows you that when you're on a nature walk, just make sure you observe and look and see all the things that are around you. And then I'm going to pass it back to Ms. Karis. Thank you everybody. That was wonderful. I love the bug exploration. It's one of our favorite things. And Maggie for her crafts. And if you may notice, Maggie, is that your new book on the bookshelf there? Uh, I've been lucky enough to read the book, and Maggie has got a section in the book on fabulous nature crafts, which I hope that she'll share some of them, and I'll share the post about Maggie's book where we make some felt strawberries in the comments on the event as well. And thank you, Trisha, for the nature walks as well. That was wonderful. Okay, thank you, everybody, for coming, and hope to see you again soon.